So far in these tutorials, we've been making graphs using basic shapes and some new effects. We've made a pie graph, a loading bar, and a bar graph so far. Let's wrap things up with a line graph. Let's go up to composition and make our last composition. We'll call this line graph. All the settings will remain the same, hit OK. Line graphs are really common in things like Wall Street, where they show the increase or the decline of the overall stock market or the economy. It's basically a line that looks kind of like a heartbeat over time. It shows the ups and the downs of that particular data. To do this, we're going to recreate the same types of lines that we used in our bar graph. In fact, let's just duplicate this. Let's go to our bar graph composition and let's copy and paste our graph line. Control C, jump back to my line graph, Control V. Hey, nice. Saves us some time and it looks consistent. So all we have to do now is draw our ups and downs. To do this, we're gonna create a brand new shape layer and use the pen tool. Let's go up to layer, new, shape layer, and let's get out our pen tool and again, fill or stroke doesn't matter right now. We'll change that in a second. And let's draw an arbitrary line here. We wanna show the ups and downs of the market. It can be as volatile or as calm as you would like it to be. There's mine. Now we don't wanna fill on this. We want this line to be stroked. So let's come up to the fill word, click on it, turn off the fill, and let's add a nice blue stroke that matches our other designs. Hit OK. Let's rename this line. Like before, our graph line should be above our line so it cleans up this end and the drop shadow interacts with it. And let's go ahead and add our four color gradient. Let's jump back to our pie graph. Let's come up to the effect controls tab and let's copy and paste our four color gradient that we've made onto our line. Beautiful. I'm gonna make my line a little bit thinner. So the stroke is currently at 25. I'm gonna make this about 15. That looks pretty good. Let's toggle down the line. Let's toggle down contents. Toggle down shape one. Toggle down stroke one. And we have a new feature that they've recently added called taper. Toggle down taper. This is really quite fun. It defaults to percent, not pixels. Let's keep it there. And we have start length and start end. Check it out. This is literally a tapering of our line. We can taper the beginning and the end, and it really gives our line some character. So taper is really fun. And we can animate that taper as well. Again, the keyframes are there. We're not going to. We're just going to use this as a design element. But let's toggle up taper and then toggle up stroke. Now let's move on to making this line appear over time. To do this, we're gonna use a brand new effect. Let's come over to our effect and presets tab. Let's erase anything we've been searching. Let's come down to generate and come down to the effect called stroke. Let's select our line in our timeline and then double click stroke to apply it. Now, stroke works kind of like as if you were writing this with a pen. So it will allow us to animate something in over time. But we have to use masks to create that line. So here's what we do. Let's get out our pen tool once again. And with our line layer selected, let's make sure we're working in masks, not shapes. And we're going to draw a singular mask line that literally follows the shape of our graph. I'm gonna start down here, click, 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 and I'll finish this out. It might get a little upset because it may think you're trying to change the original graph. So you have to click a little bit away from that, those other vertices, you can do that. And then afterwards you can come through and reposition these to fit. So that's step one for our stroke effect. When I first got my start, I was trying to use stroke and I had no idea that it had to follow a mask line. 
So I supplied stroke. I'm like, nothing's working. It's because I didn't draw a mask. So once we draw a mask and we can see that here under our masks pull down, here's mask one, we come up to the stroke effect and we say, use the path under mask one. Now we want to reveal this image across that mask line. So under here where it says paint style, change this from on original image to reveal original image. Now it's gonna make it look like your line kind of disappears, but it's still there. That's because now these settings influence the way this looks. The brush size is how thick the line that reveals your underneath image is. Two pixels is pretty thin. Let's grab that and increase it until our graph looks normal. Around 20 pixels for me. Brush hardness, we can keep at 79%. And opacity, we can keep at 100%. So I'm gonna zoom out here to fit. And what we can do now is use our start and end keyframes, specifically the end, because we want this to reveal on. So if I drag my end from 100% down to zero, check it out. It's literally gonna animate across that mask line over time. So let's start our end keyframe at 0%. And let's drag our playhead to around two and a half seconds and increase it to 100. Hit U on the keyboard to reveal. Add some ease to our last keyframe and pull that influence handle. Around 70, 80%. Set my loop point, let's play it back. Pretty nice. And changing the distance of the keyframes will change the speed at which that comes in. Now let's add our CC light sweep to this line. Let's come over to generate again and let's come down to CC light sweep with lines selected in the timeline, double click the effect to apply it. You can see it's looking very similar to before. If I move this, it's gonna kind of highlight that line over time. Really fun, I love CC light sweep. Let's bring our starting point down here a little bit, that way it traverses through the center of everything. And I'm gonna start that keyframe right about here as it comes in for the center. And a little bit after the end. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the right. Hit U on the keyboard twice to bring that up. Let's play this back. Pretty nice. Let's add this to the collection. Let's come to our All Charts composition. Let's come to our Project tab, and let's add our line graph to our group. Hit S on the keyboard for scale. Scale it down to the 50%. We can move it around. And let's play it back. So now we've learned how to create the four most common types of data visualizations using graphs and charts. And the entire time we only used the basic shapes that we already understand, but we were introduced to some new effects to help add some dimensionality to those basic shapes. With this, and between these four different types of graphs, your ability to communicate complex numbers is really quite limitless because the subtle variations that you can create with these four types of graphs are truly endless. So in the next tutorial, we're going to start working with numbers, adding actual data to our graphs. <laughs>